Hey guys, so as I mentioned in my last video, I'm going to show you how to control large stepper motors like this with an ESP32 and a cell phone. So you can use pretty much any kind of stepper motor. This is a NEMA 34, a pretty large stepper motor, and these drivers are pretty common. You can get them on eBay, AliExpress, places like that. And you would hook them up just like any other stepper motor with the different coils and they have a separate power supply, so you need a power supply for the stepper motor and then a power supply for the ESP32. In this case, this is using a battery, but you know you could use it, you know, with a five volt power supply. But you only need three pins on the ESP32, and you need one pin for the step, one pin for the direction, and one pin for the enable. You can tie all the grounds together. So for my code, which I'll put a link in the description for my code. I'm only using pins 27, 14, and 12 in ground, of course. But, you know, you could change it to be whatever you really want. And you don't have to use this ESP32. You can use my code for uh, any ESP32. So, you know, you could use a bare ESP32. And the method I'm going to be using is Wi-Fi based, but ESP32 has Bluetooth. So you could actually use it with Bluetooth as well. So when I first started researching for this, I thought I was going to have to use a logic level converter to convert the 3 volts out from the ESP32 to 5 volts because you know it says 5 volts on the subscreen but it's actually just little opto MOSFETs that uh, don't really require much current to drive so I got lucky and you can drive these giant stepper motors off of 3.3 volts that comes out of the ESP32 now I don't can't say for sure that all the drivers are going to work with 3.3 volts but I can't say for sure that you know, this particular model that I got on eBay will work. Okay, so when you open up the Blink application, you're going to see that I'm using three terminals and two sliders. And when I turn the ESP32 on, it's going to basically say the ESP32 has started and it's going to reset everything to zero. Now, these sliders, I have an angular position terminal. So when I type in a number from zero to 360, that's just what I set. You can set whatever limits you want. And then I have the angular position slider ranging from 0 to 360. Then for here, down here, we have the acceleration terminal and acceleration slider. So I'm basically just showing you you can do it either way. And there's other things like joysticks and, you know, buttons that you can set instead of this. I just kind of what I wanted to do. So the serial terminal, you can kind of use that multi-purpose. You can type in different things, you know, for different variables. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the ESP32 on and play the application so you can play or stop it. So when I turn the ESP32 on, it's basically going to blank this and tell me that it's started once it's connected to the network. So you see it flushed the values and you can see I can go from, you know, 0 to 203, 360 back to 0 and it all updates. And I even have it telling me, you know, how many steps it's taking. So I can just put the slider wherever I want. And it's pretty responsive. But I can also put, you know, 90. Say so if I want to go to 90, it goes to 90. But I also have it updating the slider. So when I go to 180, it's going to move the slider to 180 as well. So the acceleration slider also works, but my algorithm for accelerating and decelerating needs some work. So if you do happen to improve on that, you know, shoot me a message. But you, know, you can hear the difference between that and that. So basically it's just going straight to max speed. With the gearbox, I don't even really need the acceleration or deceleration because it's just, it's super strong the way it is. You know, the only reason you would want to accelerate or decelerate would be to ensure that you don't miss steps. But this thing is so overkill for what I'm going to use it for that I don't really need it, but it would be nice for smaller motors. And so basically the longer the slider is farther to the right, the it's, it's increasing the um, delay basically between the acceleration. So it doesn't really sound that good. But, you know, setting it to zero basically no acceleration, just straight to max speed. So to set this app up, 
what you can do is create new apps. I can create a new project. Uh, you know, I can actually remove each one of these. I can reposition them, make them, you know, smaller. There's a lot of other things I can add, like joysticks, and you'll see these little values here. They're, you know, uh, fake currency, but you actually can buy more uh, widgets, but all the ones I'm using here are free, but you can add um, different things, and you can even scroll down, make it, you know, if I wanted to move this down further, you know, I could add a, a bunch of things. So if I wanted to add a button, I could add a button that turns on and off, and then, you know, do I want that to be push or switch, you know, momentary or like a toggle type of thing. And then, you know, the pin, you'll see this in the code when I show it. These are digital, you know, virtual pins, basically. And for the terminal, if you, if you look at that, you set it to whatever virtual pin you want. So in my code, you'll see what you need to set them to. And they'll, if, if they're being used, it'll say busy. So you can kind of do whatever you want. You can name it. And for this particular project, you can, you know, this authorization token. So if I didn't refresh this, you could basically control this as long as my ESP32 is connected still. So obviously I'm gonna refresh it right before I upload this video. And so you can refresh. And now that, that token needs to be entered into the code. So now that I've refreshed that, I can't even control this until I update my code. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice software, Blink. Uh, spell. I'll put a link in the description for the application as well as my software that I wrote. Okay, so as far as the code goes, you only really need to be concerned with the way I set each terminal up. You need to make sure you're attaching the right virtual pins to the right uh, widgets, the Blink in the Blink application. And the other thing you need to pay attention to is the authorization token, your network name and your network password and the steps per revolution for your stepper motor. So I'm take you know, I'm micro-stepping here as well as, you know, I have a gear reduction on there. So, you know, you just need to put in how many steps per revolution your stepper motor is, and then that'll pretty much be it. And then you can kind of play around with, you know, this and use the other widgets how you want. So anyway, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. If you want to support me, you can support me on Patreon or just simply commenting and liking my videos. See you next time. Bye.